Peyton Place. Starring Dorothy Malone as Constance McKenzie. Warner Anderson as Matthew Swain. Ed Nelson as Michael Rossi. And Mia Farrow as Allison McKenzie. covers Peyton Place now in these first days of the new year. What will the year hold for Constance McKenzie and Michael Rossi? They know it must bring change, for it has already brought Elliot Carson back to Peyton Place. Elliot Carson freed on parole after serving 18 years of a life sentence for the murder of his wife. Elliot Carson has returned to make sure that changes do occur. Too thin, I yell. How was it, sure? How was you? Uh, you were saying? I don't know how you've been feeling. Pretty fair. Pretty fair. Not having any trouble with your heart? No, who told you that? You've been sending me the clarion. Oh, <laughs> you know how it is around here. Not that much for Matt Swain's right about. Sneeze once and you got pleurisy in his cargo. Oh, I could use that hard up for material. Maybe I could sell him my, my memoirs. Hell yeah. My 18 years behind bars by a convicted murderer. You're not scared. Some ways it's easier to stay in prison. Is that what you're thinking? No, no. Just remember, what's done is done. You're a free man. Well, I'm not quite a free man. I'm on parole. And then how does that work out? Well, I report to my parole officer and obey the laws and I behave myself. That's about it. The theory is that you're supposed to be able to live as normal a life as possible. Well, that seems to make sense. You really think that's possible? Behave yourself, obey the laws. It's what we've all got to do. It's not quite that simple. It's what you said. Well, the law forgives, even though it won't forget. They're not people. See, the law only tries you once for a crime, but what about public opinion? My trial commences when I walk down that street tomorrow. I'll be tried and retried for the rest of my life. I don't pretend that everyone's fair. There's no sense arguing with them that ain't. They will let you forget that? I work in the chantry. I keep my mind to myself. You'll do the same. Try to do the same. The store hasn't changed. I've been gone 18 years. Look a bit different the day I left. What well, is don't change, son? Only the way you look at it. Chandlery still Chandlery, Peyton Place still Peyton Place, even with that supermarket. <laughs> well, I don't doubt it. Figured out where I can stay. At the rooming house where I've been staying, it'll do for now. That's one thing that's changed. I've been there ever since just after your mother died. Her dead so long, son, and you've gone. You're as old as I was the day you left for prison. Eighteen years, near a third of a life. Gone, gone forever. I know it's gone. Now I'm back. For a time, I didn't think I would be. <laughs> Paper. Thank 
Carson arrived last night. It's all in here. What does it say? Nothing much, just that he's arrived. Did you know him? A little. So did Mother, but she doesn't seem to like to talk about it. What was he like? Oh, Allison, that was so long ago. Allison, sit down and eat your breakfast. But was he tall? Was he short? Did he have green hair? And it's getting cold. I don't know why we have to talk about Elliot Carson now. Why shouldn't we talk about him? Well, you're obsessed with him. I'm not. I guess it's so little happens around here. I'm sorry. I should just be quiet. Betty, are you all right? Oh, Betty, where are you? I'm in New York, New York City. Are you all right? Don't ask me that. I'm fine. There's nothing wrong. Mother, I only wanted you to know I'm okay, and that's the only reason I called. Where can we reach you, dear? You can't. I wasn't going to call, but I knew you must be getting frantic. Mother, don't worry. I know how to take care of myself. Betty, I've got to know where to find you. Aren't you coming back? No, Mother. Bye. Like talking to a stranger, like answering a wrong number. I'm fine. Don't worry, she said. She's in New York. No address. I don't even know how to reach her. She tells me not to worry. She tried to sound cheerful. I, I know her. She's... Well, at least you heard from her. Connie, Connie, what am I going to do? There's nothing you can do. Go. Just won't. Yeah. Goodbye. Goodbye. Mrs. Anderson, don't worry about Betty. She'll be all right. I know she will. Thank you, Allison. Bye. Well, I guess I... I have to call George. I just promised Mother I'd put that package inside for her. Betty called this morning. Where is she? She's in New York. She's all right. Did she ask for me? I don't know. Mrs. Anderson talked to her. Well, at least we've got something to go on. That investigator. Rod, I don't think she wants to be found. Here, I'll, I'll help you. so important? Or is it the feeling of being safe? Both. I always thought you wanted to sprout wings and fly away from here. <laughs> now, that was before. Before what? I'll be late for school. You have time? Yeah, but I, I've got to lock up. Allison. Honey, Rodney, please. What's the matter? You're talking about us. Well, maybe I... I I should call Betty's mother. She, she can tell me something. What do you want to know? Everything. But I'll settle for whatever will, whatever will help me live with myself. Do you feel guilty? I do and I don't. That's a 
convenient answer. Betty bought the ticket. She got on the bus. Why be stingy with the blame, Rodney? There's enough to go around. Are you attacking me? No. I'm attacking me. You didn't do anything. Are you sure? I'm sure. If, if you ever noticed me before, it was just as a friend of Norman's. Until... I could never understand why... Why what? Well, why you suddenly began... Fell in love with you? No. I did love you, Allison. No. Oh, I know I shouldn't say those things now. My, my only thought should be of Betty. There she is. How she is. Because those are the rules. And I've kept to the rules, haven't I? Not because they made them, but because they fit. I have worried about Betty. I have felt guilty. But so did she. That's the worst part about all this. The three of us, you, me, Betty, we've all felt guilty about being in love. Yes, maybe all three of us were in love with the wrong people. No, we were in love at the wrong time. But I did love you, Alice. You know what I wanted to say. That's the final statement. Yes, Mr. Harrington. Uh, check it, please. I want to take it with me. Yes, sir. How'd you tell your coat? I don't know. So, drinking. I was over at White River looking. Want me to call Julie? Okay. No. Have you spoken to her today? I've been away. What were you looking for in White River? In the business, business. I had a prospect there. Did you sir? You'll call me. How's business, George? Oh, it's better than... You better see a doctor. No, I've got to sit down. Why'd you do it, Lass? Could have been someone. This could have been mine. All my life. All my life. Why? I'm going to call Julie. 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 No. She might be able to help you. I don't want her to see me. Betty. George. Listen to me. still looking for Betty.
my investigator won't give up until he finds her. When he comes up with something, we'll let you know. Let me know what, Buzz? Where Betty is. Where is Betty? George. Oh, come on, Les. Let's talk about this some other time. Now, what do you want to see me about? I didn't want to see you, George. Come on, Les. Every time I come in off the road, you want to see me? No. What are you trying to do? Confuse me? You haven't worked for me for months. You just told me you went to White River on your own business. Remember. Elliot! Elliot Carson! <laughs> oh, you are looking good. <laughs> good to see you back. Thank you. Come on up here and sit with me for a spell, eh? <laughs> I'll think with you, George. Oh, fine, fine. Yeah, yeah. I quit my job at the mill, you know. Yeah, I went back into insurance. Opened my own office up. Right over there. See? Yeah, ah, things are really booming. And Julie, how's she? Julie, ha, 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 she's just the same as the last time we saw her. And uh, little Betty, oh, she's grown up, too. Betty, is that your daughter? Yeah, yeah, oh, she's quite a young woman now. She, uh, she married uh, Harrington's oldest boy, Rodney. Ah, oh, yeah, she's, uh, well, you know, she's, uh... <laughs> yeah, what's the use? Betty's gone. She's run away. Julie's gone. She's walked out on me. And the business? <laughs> it's a farce and a joke. A total miserable failure. I'm sorry, George. I didn't mean to. Well, why shouldn't I tell you this? This town has treated you just as badly as it has me. Do you remember the last time we were on this bandstand? August 1945, just after DJ Day. Oh, mm. you mean the day they had the big parade? <laughs> In our honor. Yeah, the square was full of people and the band was playing. When that old colonel pinned that medal on my chest, oh, I was proud. Watching Julie, Julie was proud of me then. Do you remember? How you earned your medal? I lived. I lived through a kamikaze attack. A month on a raft in the Pacific. You had to kill to live where I was. I lived through Guadalcanal and a couple of other places. They gave us medals for surviving. Oh, boy. <laughs> we really tied one on that night, didn't we? <laughs> who put who to bed? <laughs> well, I think history forgot to record that one. <laughs> Well, you got to admit, buddy, those are the days. Oh, boy. Sergeant Anderson. Boy, when they sent Sergeant Anderson's squad out to do a job, it got done. There was no two ways about it. You ever missed the service? You know what I've missed the most? The day the band played and they pinned the medals on us? Well, then I knew it was all over. All over? <laughs> Combat was easy. When I got out and back to Peyton Briggs, I thought this place was my cookie. I spent 18 years shadow boxing. Now I'm all punched out. Everything is empty and shadowy. Why? Can you answer me that? Well, in combat, you always knew who the enemy was. Won't you forget the war, George? It's finished. Yep. 
Well, you take my advice, buddy boy. You dig yourself a good, deep foxhole. You'll need it. You'll need it. Anderson. Well, I don't forget to lock the door. I guess you did, sir. Back in five minutes. Back in a week. Back next year. Well, sit down, Mr. Uh... King. Howard King. I represent the Davis Realty Company. What's this? The rent, Mr. Anderson. You're in arrears badly. Mr. Davis had tried to reach you, but you don't answer his letters or return his calls. That sign said back in five minutes you've been gone all day. Jack Davis. No new name for thirty years. He doesn't want to evict you, Mr. Anderson. Well, what is this? An invitation to a cocktail party? So this is very valuable office space. I have a check for you in the morning. Thank you, Mr. Anderson. Certified? Certified. By J.P. Morgan and all the Morgan partners. Shall I pick it up, sir? Around ten? You do that little thing. You'll be here about ten in the morning. Now, I would like to ask you a little favor. Get out. Get out! Evict George Anderson. Try to bum out. Okay. The survivors against the losers. the continuing story of Peyton Place. I suppose you think that's not the only memory I have of this place. Well, frankly, I was surprised that you wanted to come back here. Because of what happened to my wife? Why do we watch any of this? We can't help. Well, every disaster draws a crowd. And there must be something wrong with her. George, it's Julie. Let me in. Please, George. For me? 